Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be continuing to configure Open Media Vault. And we're going to start with a bit of cleanup and fixes from the last session where I made a mistake. So if we SSH into the server and we try to run our update command that we set an alias for, it's going to say command not found. And we can see our alias is in our bash rc file but our bash rc file isn't loading when we log in and the reason for that was because i did things slightly out of order where i created the users and then set the home folder after the fact so the default bash rc and dot profile were never added into our home directory but we can very easily fix that by copying them over to our home directory so when we log in everything works as intended. And those default files in Open Media Vault are gonna be found in this folder here, Etsy Skell. And if we change into there and we ls, well, we'll ls la so we can see these hidden files. But these are the three files that we're after. And we're gonna copy the profile and the, the bash logout over to our home folder and then we're going to pin this bash rc file onto the end of our bash rc file that's already in our home folder and that's going to be these commands And there you go, everything's fixed. So now if we log out and we log back in, we'll be able to run our update command. And remember what this does is it takes a time shift snapshot and then it runs the update process. And that way, if the update breaks our system, we can very easily revert back to the state that the server was in just prior to issuing the update. And in the last video, I set up time shift, but I didn't go into some of the other options. So let's take a look at those right now. If we do a sudo time shift list, this is going to show us all the snapshots that we've taken. So we can see the first initial snapshot we took, our first update snapshot, and now this update snapshot that we just ran and if we wanted to restore one of these we would just do a sudo time shift restore and it's going to ask what snapshot do you want to restore so if you wanted to go all the way back to the beginning we could just type a zero and hit enter and then it's going to ask you some other options and on those options you can just fly through with the defaults and then it'll finally ask you if you want to continue and then you'd hit yes uh, however, we don't want to revert back to one of these snapshots, so I'm going to type A to abort. And that's basically time shift. But we're going to move on to the bulk of today's video, which is going to be on SnapRaid and MergerFS. And first we're going to install SnapRaid. And for that, we're going to go to System, Plugins. And we'll just type in SnapRaid up here. Click on it and click Install. All right, now with SnapRaid installed, we can go to Services and SnapRaid. Now first we need to set up what drives we want to set SnapRaid on. And we'll hit the Add, and then we're gonna put it on our four data drives. So we're gonna select our first data drive, and we can just name this one Data1. Put the content file and the data file on it. Hit Save, and then we're gonna do this with the other data drives here. Data 2, content and data, third drive, data 3, content and data, and the fourth drive is going to be our parity drive, so we're going to call it parity, and we're not going to set content and data, we're going to make it the parity drive. And with those set, we can hit apply. And now what this does is it gives us a bit of redundancy. So if any one of these four drives fail, we do not lose any data. There will be enough data on the other drives 
to restore whatever was lost on that drive. And snap rate is nice because it allows you to use mismatched drives. So if you have a two terabyte and a four terabyte and a six and an eight, you know, they're all different drive sizes. You can put them in a snap rate array and get a bit of redundancy like a traditional RAID would offer. Of course, it's not RAID. It's not giving you the performance benefits that a RAID array would offer you, but it does give you drive redundancy. So if one of these drives fails, you can restore the data that was lost on that drive. Snap RAID sort of blurs the lines between a RAID array and a backup system. It's not either of those fully, but it does serve its purpose. It does give you a little bit of extra redundancy. So now that we have these drives set, we're going to go back to the snap rate up here and we're going to head on over to rules and we're going to add some exclusions. We don't want snap rate to see everything because what can happen is when snap rate checks the files and then it starts running its sync operations, if those files change in that process, it's going to throw an exception. It's going to error, and we don't want that to happen. So some of the things that you want SnapRate to ignore are like cache directories, temporary directories, log files. And as you set up Docker containers, it's a really good idea to run a cron job or a task that's going to shut down all your Docker containers, run your SnapRate sync, and then start your Docker containers back up. And I can show how that works too in later videos after we get some Docker containers set up. But just for now, we're going to add in dot log to exclude, and that should exclude a majority of log files. We'll put in cache. And temp. And this should be pretty good to start with. Then we'll jump over to settings. And over here, there's a couple things I like to change scrub frequency. I want this to happen every single day, but to only 5%. And then every 20 days, a full scrub should have taken place. Now the snap rate plugin also added a cron task. So if we go over to system and scheduled task, we can see it in here where it's running this script called OMV snap rate diff. And in that script, it's doing the scrub and sync operations. And we can change this because we want the scrub to run every single day to 5%. So we actually have to call this script daily and we'll click on edit and then change day of week from every Sunday to every day. And later on when we have Docker services running, in order to make sure we don't run into conflict when the sync operation happens, we'll create a couple scripts in our user home script directory, and then we'll call those up on either side of this script here so we can do a Docker stop like this and Docker start up like that. And then it'll stop the Docker containers, run the snap rate sync, and then start them back up right after. We don't have those scripts yet, so we're not going to have those on the front and back of that just right now, but looking forward, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, we forgot to enable this. So we'll go back in, click enable, hit save. And now every day at 2.30 a.m., SnapRaid is going to run, scrub, and sync. The next thing we're gonna look at is MergerFS. And MergerFS allows you to combine multiple drives or multiple locations all into one. So we're gonna look at MergerFS next. We'll install the plugin for that. Go to Plugins, MergerFS, and install it. Now this is gonna be found in Storage, and here you can see MergerFS. And what we're gonna do is create a data pool. So we'll just call this Data Pool 1. And then we're going to select our drives and we're going to select the three data drives here, but not the drive that we're using for our snap raid parity, because we don't want to actually be putting any data on that drive. That is just going to be the parity drive for these three other drives here. And I have to change this setting because my drive size is so small 
And then here is the other thing that you can take a look at. Existing path, most free space. So this is your policy on how data gets added to these drives when you're using the MergerFS file system. I'm going to change this to most free space just so it's easier for you to see how MergerFS can work. And I'll hit save. Now those are set. Let's go to our file systems over here. And you can see we have this new location, this new directory, serve merger FS data pool one, and you can see the size of it. it's 11.53 gigabytes because it's adding these three together. Let's copy this path and change to that directory in our terminal and LS. All right, you can see there's folders and files already in this directory. And the reason for that is because we had already added some folders and things into this disk. And this location is actually giving us a view across all three of these disks. Now, if we create a file in here, the file is going to be put potentially on any one of these disks. And that depends on the policy that you set. And the policy that I have set on this is to put it on the one with the most free space. So let me show you that. We'll go to the media movies folder and we'll create a dummy movie file in here. Fabricate. We'll make it a 500 megabyte file. And just call it movie one. And you can see it added it to our drive right here. Oh yeah, these are our three data drives that are pooled together with merger FS. This is the one that the operating system is installed on. So these are the three drives that merger FS is pooling together and that we have snap raid set up. And this is our parity drive down here. So let's copy this file in the very same location. So we'll do a CP movie one and we'll call it movie two. So it creates a separate file and then we'll see which drive it puts it on. So you can see that put it on this drive and we'll do the same thing, movie three, and it should put it on this one because this one is now the one with the most free space. And there you go. So you can see every time you add a file, it's going to place it on the drive that has the most free space as long as you're doing it under this pathway. Now what's nice about this is you can still address these drives individually. Let me show the mount points. So if you want to still specifically put a file or run some Docker container where it's only going to set the files onto this drive specifically, you can reference this mount point. However, if you have a Docker service running and you just want it to span the files across all three drives, you don't really care where the file ends up, then you can reference this pathway and merger FS will just set the file on the drive that has the most free space, depending on what policy that you set for merger FS. And again, in the last video, we set up sim links and you can do the same thing with all these different pathways. So we put our sim links in the shared folder. Remember, we have easy ways to get to these shared folders. However, if you wanted to, you could also set uh, sim links to these paths here. So to this specific drive, we could do a sim link. And then if you wanted to create a sim link to your merger FS, And there you go. Now you would have an easy way to set files specifically to this drive or to span the files across your entire data pool, your collection of those three disks. And that's basically it. That's merger FS and that's snap raid. That's the way it works. I know a lot of people that are beginning to get into self hosting. They look at something like unraid. And they're really drawn to it because it gives you that ability to use 
mismatched drives, but you can accomplish that same goal with Open Media Vault with using MergerFS and SnapRaid. It gives you the same freedom with the added benefit of you actually know how it works. You know the two systems you're using. It's not doing some auto magical stuff behind the scenes that only Unraid knows about. You actually set these systems up yourself so you know how they work. You can fix them. You can understand them. And in my opinion, that's much better than relying on some company doing some magical stuff behind the scenes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to start getting set up with Borg in the next video, our backup solution. And then we can start moving on to getting Docker and some actual services set up. Thank you for watching. You have a nice day.